So, you want to play Dungeons and Dragons. Some folks love platformers, others love expansive RPGs, and other others can't get enough of that Adderall-fueled twitch-aiming in first-person shooters. I say, why not have all three in one? Dungeons & Dragons is the perfect game as an archetype. It has spawned thousands of offshoots, remixes, and thematic variations, including the system that inspired the Cyberpunk 2077 video game coming out later this year. So how the hell do you play a game with no required setting, a sandbox the size of your imagination, and a story that you create while you play? Math, a little bit of creativity, and a set of dice. It really is that simple. But like any electrician or plumber can tell you, just because you have the tools doesn't mean you know how to use them. So Teach is here to do a little talking so you can be a little more prepared for your first game. The core of any character is their six main statistics. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. These six scores are typically referred to as ability scores, and they will be the basis for just about every role that you make. Each game master or dungeon master has their preferred way of generating these, but the clearly best way is to roll dice. I'll put out a character creation video later, so for now, let's just use this character to learn how to play. Your ability scores directly affect your skills list, which has 16 different categories. Don't worry, you won't need to do too much with those since the game master will tell you which one to roll when you want your character to do something. Want to sneak past a giant while they sleep? Roll a stealth check. Want to do a badass backflip over a table while you dodge out of melee range? Acrobatics. Each skill will benefit from the associated ability, in those examples, dexterity, and proficiency bonuses if your character happens to be skilled in that area. But wait, what is a check? Here's where the math and the dice come in. Anytime you are asked to roll, grab that 20-sided dice and toss it on the table. Once you have that number, add your skill bonus to it and announce the total to the table. The game master will then tell you if it is a success or if your character has failed the roll. Attacking works the same way. Roll that 20-sided dice, called a d20, then add your attack bonus and wait in suspense to see if you successfully hit your opponent. All that is left is that pesky creativity part. A game of Dungeons & Dragons is only as fun as you help it to be. You don't have to dress up and be in character like Kirk Lazarus, but if that's what you're into, whatever creams your cheese, dude. Just make sure it doesn't overwhelm the other players, because if one person is shouting over everyone else, no one has fun. Your character can try just about anything. And if you're not sure, ask the game master. Yeah, I want to run and jump over the flames blocking our path. Can I do that? Uh, like Ty Lee or the Terminator. Well, uh, I'm a mug, so Ty Lee. Awesome. <laughs> Roll acrobatics. Sometimes the coolest moments in D&D actually happen outside of combat. There are a lot of examples of amazing players that have meaningful and deep dialogue in character, and that's a great goal to have. But trust me, it's way better to play and just say, I try to convince them, instead of not playing because you don't want to do the level 10 roleplay. Creativity doesn't have to be grandiose or deep, you just have to think, what would my character do next? That about sums up my tips for first-time players, but don't worry, we're just getting started. I'll be dropping character creation videos, gameplay tips and tricks, and a character sheet breakdown to navigate some of the finer points of Dungeons & Dragons. Also, keep an eye out for more news about Project Gotham, the Ridge Streamcast homebrew DC Universe game coming in the fall, so be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Teach, and I'm just here to spread some knowledge and learn a little in return. Thanks.